Hey YouTube, Cyber Aquarius here. Just got a couple new additions for my reef tank. This here is my blue spotted watchman goby. And I'm acclimating him now the same way that I did my clownfish last Saturday. Just got him got his bag clipped to the side. I'm pouring a half a cup of water in every five minutes for the first 20 minutes. Pouring half the water out and repeating that procedure again. And I'm also drip acclimating my rose bubble tipped an enemy. I've just got an airline tubing with a knot tied in it. I've got the drip rate about two drips per second at the moment. I'm going to increase that to three drips per second uh, after 20 minutes. But I've got a suction cup to the to the side of the aquarium there and up at the top and clipped to the rim just to keep the hose you know in the aquarium. And um, I've got the MP10 turned off for two reasons. Uh, well, actually for one, but you need to turn off your power heads if you're introducing an anemone for two reasons. One, so that it can uh, find an attachment point, you know, without being blown around by strong currents. And another thing, you don't want it to get too close to the impeller because it could get sucked in and chopped up and it'll just ruin everything in your tank. But I've actually got the sponge uh, guard that comes with the MP10 to, to prevent that from happening. Now I've got my auto top off unplugged just to keep any water that I pull out of the system from uh, being replaced with fresh water. I've got a batch of salt water made up over there. I've already done a 10% water change but I've got about a half a gallon left to replace the water that's lost for acclimation. And guys, the, the clownfish have been doing fantastic. They've settled in from day one. They've uh, readily been accepting food. They stay together, don't bother each other and at night time they'll actually sleep over here on the substrate right here in the left hand corner i'm gonna have to take a picture of that and put it on my instagram but uh, my wife loves them she's actually been coming in here and watching the aquarium which is just uh unbelievable and um oh i got two empty snail shells with some coralline algae on it this is going to seed the the tank with coralline algae so i'm hoping within six to eight months that this rock will be covered now i still haven't added any added any uh, of my cleanup crew and that's because i still don't have any algae to speak of so i'll add those you know as as needed but today it's just going to be the watchman goby and the rose bubble tipped an enemy let me go ahead and finish getting these guys acclimated and I'll get them in the aquarium and give you guys a, a quick video of them. All right guys, I'm gonna feed the fish so that I can hopefully get a shot of the blue spot on camera. I just wanna take this time to show you guys what I'm using. This is LRS Reef Frenzy. This stuff here is fantastic. Not only does it feed your fish, but it feeds all filter feeding organisms as well. <clears throat> and um, I'm also using the mysa shrimp, feeding that about every three days I'm feeding this about every two to three days and I've also got the uh, new life spectrum one millimeter pellets the clownfish are eating this uh, readily the blue spot we'll have to acclimate him to this as well but um, right now I'm gonna go with the LRS I just put it in a little bit of deionized water and I'm gonna spoon feed it out to the tank here in a minute but even though it comes in a Ziploc bag Keep it in another Ziploc bag and in a brown paper sack just to keep it fresh. You know, to keep a uh, freezer burn from getting to it. But all right, let me go ahead and try to uh, get the blue spot to come out for you guys. See what happens. Okay, guys, so here's the rose bubble. This isn't where I placed him originally. He's been in this spot now for over 24 hours. I originally placed him over here right here on the front of this rock because that's where the clownfish would sleep at night. I was hoping that they'd sort of take to him. But it's to be expected, he moved all the way over here. Probably within about the first four hours, he ended up there. But I expect him to move again. I doubt that that's his sweet spot. So we'll look and see where he uh, eventually ends up. I know they, uh, they love light. Right now my, my LEDs are dialed down to 40% right now they are at 29 percent because they're ramping down for the night but let me uh let me show you over here there's a cave it's probably better to show you right here the the blue spot i don't know if you can see him 
he hangs out in this cave and he comes out at feeding time so I'm going to go ahead and feed that you guys get a get a glimpse of him at home and I know I said I was going to spoon the LRS into the tank but I'm actually going to squirt it in with my syringe here clownfish are ready to go let's see if we can get a blue spot to come out let's take a look now, I try not to feed it's actually more than I wanted to squirt in there but we'll see he'll he'll come out here in a minute there he comes let's go buddy come on Well, I love this guy. I've always loved blue spot gobies. Come on, you gotta come out and get it. He just loves that cave. There's plenty of uh, room in there for him. I left the rock work very open for flow. And uh, guys, my nitrates at the end of the cycle, towards the end of the cycle, were at five parts per million and now they're undetectable using Seachem's nitrate test kit. I tested this morning, the water was absolutely clear, zero parts per million, and I contribute that to the stability as well as the Seachem's pond matrix in the, in the back. I'm using 100, and, or excuse me, 1,087 grams, which is just over one liter. And um, also the, the live rock, provides for anaerobic zones for the for the bacteria to process the nitrates all right guy you're gonna have to come out and get you some food now i love this guy i love the way that they stand up on the substrate with their pectoral fins and uh i'd appreciate it if, if you guys would help me come up with a name for this guy I only name you know my most uh, special fish. I don't name all of my fish, but the ones that are you know true to my heart, I'll try to you know give them a name. And I'm thinking maybe Happy Face. See how he's got that frown. Whoops. But uh, Happy Face or Slim Jim or something. I don't know. But just giving you guys uh, suggestions on a name. My son, my four-year-old son, already named the clownfish. And uh, to no surprise, the smallest one is named Nemo. Where the, where's he at, the small one? The small one he named Nemo. And the larger one, uh, he named him Poopy. <laughs> I don't know what it is about four-year-olds and that word, but um, yeah, this is Poopy here. So. All right, well, anyway, we got the blue spot on camera. Man, I love this guy. And um, the snail shells with the coralline algae are out here in the front. I tested my calcium levels this morning at 425 parts per million. My alkalinity was at nine and a half degrees carbonate hardness, DKH. And my magnesium was 13, I think it was 1350, but water parameters are ideal to start growing coralline algae. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm waiting for my Toons Coral Gum Instant to come in. Bulk Reef Supply was out of it, so I ordered it from uh, a place in Australia. It was the only place I could find that had it. And I hope that it comes in sometime this week. But when it does, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some uh, coral frags. So look for more uh, progress on the reef tank. I'll post it to you guys as soon as I get more, you know, more livestock in here.